pulled Risley but unsure in your team? You made one but still have doubts? In this video I will show you every Risley team you can play and give you the pros and cons to each one of them. Let's start right away with the Melt teams. I will divide them into three different archetypes. Melt without an emo, VV Melt and Burn Melt. At the end of that I'm gonna give you the best combos and they're going to apply to every Melt version. Melt comps are much easier to play than the anemo version. The most common and probably best iteration is this one. This team can use a 25 seconds rotation as I talked about in my previous video where you alternate between Shin He top and old versions of their skill and connect them with Risley's kit, using his normals after a hold skill and his burst after a top skill. It will still eat on your Bennett burst up time but unfortunately Shin He timing are not perfect for a character like Risley and more suited for Ayaka in my opinion. Nonetheless, she's still amazing with him. If this sounds all too complicated, however, you can use an easier rotation like this one. If you don't want to slot Shangling, you can also use Jin, but most other ways to apply Pyro might result in missed melts, as Shenhe will apply Cryo too. You could skip her burst in such teams, but slotting her just for the skill is not advised. Before we move on, know that aside from Bennett, which is really good here, you can slot any Pyro unit as long as you're applying enough Pyro. These teams can include characters like Toma, Tangfei, Songli and Leila to just name a few. But of course, as in so many teams nowadays, Ben and Shangling is the best version. These teams can play characters like Hazua or Jin for one or two main purposes. Swirling both Cryo and Pyro or possibly apply Pyro to sustain Melt. The second might not be necessary, especially if Shangling is there, but the first is the real focus of an Anemo in a Risley team. And unfortunately, it's also its downside, as double swirling can be really tough to do and not result in high uptime. Let's make an example. You're gonna use Bennett Burst, then go to Risley, and without using his skill, try to apply a Cryo Aura, maybe with a Burst, then Kazua Burst and Skill will swirl both Cryo and Pyro and infuse Pyro. But then look at the uptime on Bennett. Really, really short. We can optimize this further, and if Shena is present, she's gonna help out, so Bennett into applying Cryo, and then using Kazua or Jin to swore both elements, but still it's on our Bennett uptime. Okay, how about we delay Bennett burst as much as possible? We can try to do one normal to apply Cryo, Kaskuoba, then go Kazu, and here a skill plus burst will give us both swirls and the infusion that we want. Then we go Bennett into Shangling and then Risley. We have the best possible uptime on Bennett burst while still buffing Pyronado, but now our swirl will be a bit shorter. Honestly, we could talk about these rotations for hours and I don't want to discourage anyone trying out these teams, especially because with another cryo unit it can be way easier to do such setups, but the key point is to not worry too much about auto swirling. Focus on swirling one element, providing pyro infusion, or even consider not using an ammo at all. Oh, this is a fun one, I love how well burn melt works. Basically what happens here is, once you apply Pyro and add Danger, a Burning Aura is going to be formed. This Burning Aura can be reacted with and be fueled by more Danger. So even if you apply Pyro once, as long as Danger keeps being applied, this Burning Aura will never expire. This is where characters like Nahida, Yao Yao or Baiju come into play. But unfortunately having too many melts or having them on a wrong timing will make it so that the Burning Aura can't keep up and expires prematurely. We can fix this by adding a unit like Toma in the team. We achieve two things. Keep the burning up without ever having problems with our melts, and maybe even more importantly, protect us from burning down ourselves. Burning can do a lot of damage when too close to the enemy and a somewhat fragile character like Risley really wants to avoid that. Do note that some bosses hit boxes make it so that you actually don't get the burn damage yourself, but against small enemies it's very easily happening. In this team, we could technically ditch Bennett and even go Danger Resonance, but his burst can have such a good time here and is definitely worth it. Unless you need it for another team, of course. This will be brief, as we already discussed this in the last video and further in the comment section, but you can do three different things. And for skip, basically dashing to skip your N4 and jumping from N3 to N5 directly, or lining up the N5 by doing either a normal before your skill, so one normal, skill, five normals, charge attack, and similarly to the previous one, using a charge attack to line up your melts. So one normal, charge attack, five normals, charge attack. Every combo here ends with a charge attack to make sure that starting over lines up the fifth normal melting. But keep in mind that the charge attacks will always melt and these are important. 
You can cast them for free and more damage only when his Ascension 1 is active. A strategy can also be to spam charge attack often just to melt, but each one is going to be a 50 stamina cost that you can't always sustain. This is another team where Shunha and Kazuha excel and they basically buff themselves and Rise Sleep, but unfortunately the fourth unit is usually stuck being a healer and to fill the mono cryo team it would basically be Mika, Diona or Chi Chi. All of this would not get much by having Shunha and Kazuha in the team. C1 users can enjoy using Leila, which especially a C4 would do great in this team, or honestly many other supports. Breaking the team's identity with Bennett or Kokomi or anyone is also totally fine and makes it more of a hyperish kind of composition or maybe a melt team, depending on which unit you choose. Freeze teams are easy to play and have access to one of the strongest sets in the game, Blitz Strayer. Risley, however, is not forced to that set and can decide to still stick to Marechosi. These teams are meant for a group of feasible units, so Risley with his low AoE is not always ideal, but can make work of units that Ganyu and Ayaka can't make a perfect use of, and that is Zinchu and Yellen. Shattering will happen on each charge attack, but that's a problem only if the Hydro is very slow, for example Mona or Barbara. A very similar team to the previous one, but this excels at single target damage and energy management. The last slot doesn't need to be a healer if Risley is C1, but otherwise should be. A strong case can be made for Jin that can swirl both Cryo and Hydro with one skill. It's vital here to double swirl as it will greatly boost the entire team's damage, but be careful on the way you're doing it. The steps to make sure this works are to apply Cryo, then apply Hydro to create a frozen aura, and then apply Hydro again, which will make sure that you have a frozen aura and an underlying Hydro aura. The frozen aura will count as Cryo and applying strong Animo will result in a scroll for both elements. In the example on screen, using Yellen's skill and then Jin doesn't give us two swords while using Zinchu's skill, which applies Hydro twice, instead works fine. This is getting too nerdy, I know, but remember to apply enough Animo. Things like Kazuo's top skill will not work, as it only applies one unit of Animo, but his old skill and burst instead apply two units, and that's enough to double swirl. I like this team, but unfortunately, I still don't like the excess of single target units in a Freed's team. I want my Freed's team to be strong against a group of enemies, keeping them in place together with Animo. If I'm in a single target scenario in the Abyss, the likelihood of it being a boss is pretty high, and that means giving up Blitzer Strayer, the Freed's effect, and the easy double swirl. Does it only bother me to play Risley in a Hyperbloom team? I mean, he does fairly well, don't get me wrong, but literally anyone could be there and the overall performance of the team would not change much. The reason people use Cryo in these teams is because it helps create more Bloom cores for Hyperbloom to react to it. The exact amount is not gonna be very impressive and highly depends on the amount of elements that are applied, but as you can see in the clip, Sinchu's skill creates two cores with Danger alone and three instead when Cryo is also there. The reason why is that the Hydro now has to go through the Cryo Aura first, clearing it and removing a tiny bit of Danger for the first Bloom. After that, the Danger that is left is enough for two more cores to be generated. This is basically the Jeff 101 lesson, but all you need to know is that you are, on average, getting a few extra cores, but nothing crazy. The second reason is getting some freeds of time in a Hyperbloom team, which can be useful, but to be honest, since the Hyperbloom tracks down the enemies, it really depends on you if it's something you value or not. A very strong team, but you're not really playing on Rise to this strength. There are teams that I left out for one or multiple reasons. For example, high constellation teams like C6 Risley or Shenhe or similar that I cannot personally test since I wish for every character but not past C0. Virgin teams that can actually be quite alright and depending on the amount of danger present can have a few melts for Risley and keep Virgin damage up but in my opinion they're a bit too specific and don't play on Risley's kit very well. Also skipped attack speed teams since to be honest they're mostly for fun and end up going either into the melt or hyper shenhe categories. And lastly teams that are just too unpopular and wouldn't add much to the overall conversation. And that was all, hope your Risley journey goes for the best. I have lots more content planned, especially for the upcoming Furina release. Leave a like or a comment if you feel like this video helped you out so that more people can reach it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.